right, so that time has come to switch smartphones. It's just, it's part of the gig here. As you know, many new smartphones come across the table and I'm always examining them, trying to figure out which one is gonna be the next one to become my daily phone that goes in my pocket and I use for an extended period of time. And often that means beyond the typical one week cycle. In many cases, it means I'll use that phone for months if it happens to be my favorite during that period. That's been the case with this one in front of me. This is the S20 Ultra. I've told you guys about it, dating back to when it came out and my SIM card went into it. I recently updated you and asked you guys what I should switch to from this device. You guys voted, so I heard you on that. But before I switch over to another device from this one, I feel since I've used it for so long, I should give you guys some feedback, some feelings, some, some things that, uh, some observations that I think you start to pick up on with an even greater extended usage. Takeaway, biggest takeaway, this is a big phone. <laughs> that seems weird. Uh, that seems like something that you could observe immediately upon getting it out of the box, which I did. It's a thing that becomes more apparent to you as it is your main device, as it sits in your pocket for a longer period of time. I think for me, this is right at that fringe. It's right at that edge of maybe being too big. I didn't know if I was ever gonna say that, to be honest, because smartphone sizes have just been consistently scaling up and the screen's big and beautiful and bright. And But this one may have been the first where I was sitting there thinking, man, it'd be nice to have a slightly smaller phone right now. Maybe lighter, maybe the weight is even a bigger component for me. If I'm out and even maybe even put a pair of gym shorts on, you know, that could happen. It has happened. Kind of, it's crazy. Th then this thing, it's flopping around and, and you feel kind of like you have a weight in your pocket. It's got the huge camera module on it. It's totally understandable. That said, that comes with probably my favorite aspect, which is the battery life. Because the phone is huge, it means they can slap a giant battery in there. And that's exactly what this thing has. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. and has some of the best battery life I've ever experienced in a smartphone. So much so that there's been times where I forgot to charge it one night and I made it through most of the next day, no problem, which is kind of crazy for me personally. It's been at the very top edge for me on the day-to-day -day of anything I've tested recently. You have a huge display, you have 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now granted, most of the time I'm running this not in the highest resolution because I'm picking the high refresh rate instead. I'm not super excited about the fact that I can't do both. Hey man, if I want to drain the battery and I want to run high res, alongside high refresh. I wish I could do it because the refresh is probably my next favorite feature after the battery. Just the unbelievable fluid nature, snappiness. Now the next thing I wanna touch on is probably the biggest con for me. Maybe I just had high expectations in this department and I don't think they were actually met here, which is the camera department. I just expected this camera to demolish and it didn't really do that. And I'll tell you specifically where, and I talked about this a little bit in a camera test video. The autofocus here leaves a lot to be desired. I don't know what is going on. There's been some updates, but it's still, particularly if you're shooting video, the autofocus is just not grabbing very quickly. It's, it's kind of bizarre, but it's just not at the level that I had hoped for personally. This doesn't matter as much for still photos where it can grab focus, you can snap the photo and move on with your life. But during video, it's just, it's painstaking sometimes when you're just waiting for the thing to grip focus and it doesn't. None of the drawbacks to me are a complete deal breaker. That said, just because Samsung is a leader in the space, like I said, you set your expectations really high and you hope for things to be perfect. It might very well be the best battery on any smartphone right now, outside of those endurance things that exist. As far as just flagships go, it might be the best battery. It might be the best display when you combine Samsung's OLED tech along with this high refresh, but it's not a perfect phone. No phone is perfect. The speakers are really good on it as well, by the way, I should also pop that in there. But anyways, it's time to switch now. You guys voted, I gave you guys the, the choice. I talked to you on Twitter and I even put a community post on YouTube and it was a unanimous thing. You guys want me to switch to this one right here. This is the latest OnePlus device. It is of course the OnePlus 8 Pro. I was kind of thinking about the OnePlus 8 as being a potential option, but it just, they added a feature to this one 
that I have been waiting for OnePlus to add for so long that I just couldn't imagine going with the regular OnePlus 8 model. And that of course is wireless charging. And on top of that, it is the fast wireless charging. This guy right here, which is their proprietary uh, quick charge, warp charge 30 wireless charger. I don't mind, I have it here, but it's important to note it's an extended cost. This thing is, I don't know, 90 bucks, 100 bucks Canadian. It's an extra cost on top of this to take advantage of the fast wireless charging. It will work backwards compatible with any wireless charger you have, but it's a thing that I use. I have it on my bedside table. And whenever I would switch to OnePlus devices in the past, I'd have to go yank the cable back out. And I know it's, you're nitpicking, but it's just the differences between these flagship devices. It's so slim that every little extra headache is something you got to report on something you talk about like i said it's tough to find a champ so you're looking at these slight little advantages and oneplus didn't have it now they have it samsung kind of left the door open at least with the ultra model in my opinion now i know a lot of people really like this blue color i'm a little more traditional on the smartphones i like black and gray and things like that for the dailies it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna pop a later case on it, obviously. Yeah, the later case for me is a must. It was actually the motivation to start the company was to, to make sure that I had availability personally on these cases when I would switch to this wide variety of models and the availability wasn't there in the past. And of course now it is. These are both available. You can order them right now. These cases, whether it's the OnePlus 8 Pro or the S20 Ultra or the regular S20s or the regular OnePlus 8. And it's just because I got so used to this particular texture and I got used to this grip and I got used to this in the pocket. It's the thinnest case you can do and it provides just enough friction that these glass phones don't slide out of the pocket which was the main issue for me whenever I was using a modern phone caseless. All right, some quick observations with the OnePlus 8 Pro. It's also big. Would you look at that? The one, the S20 Ultra I thought was enormous. I told you it was enormous. You look at these on, in the picture and it looks like they're the same size. OnePlus is just straight up saying it. We're coming after your S20 Ultra money. That's where they're at now. They scaled up the thing they scaled up the price, which everybody has an opinion on. I don't know if it fits their DNA, but they're coming for that S20 money. Now I will say it does feel smaller. I know in your picture, they look identical, but it's slimmer on the edges. So the whole thing feels thinner. Of course, it does have a smaller battery in it. Same chip, similar screens. Either way, these are both competitors for your flagship money. I think it's pretty obvious. And I think a lot of people will be cross shopping these two phones now that the OnePlus 8 Pro does exist. So for me, this is a perfect transition. Put the SIM over here in the 8 Pro and then have the S20 Ultra fresh in my mind, the experience of having used it. Obviously I'm giving up some camera modules. I'm giving up some battery life. I'm gaining something that's slightly more portable and I'm changing software. OnePlus has always been one of my favorite software optimizers in the Android space because they don't mess with it too much. They mess with it in ways that you, you actually would want to mess with it or you could appreciate. For example, within the customization, you change the colors right within your settings menu here. You could change these little dots from, they were blue out the box and then you're into red very easily if you want to. System customization, your accent color, this can be whatever you want. Okay, that's a thing you might actually want to do. Same with tone, not just dark mode, but dark mode, light mode, and colorful mode. Okay, why not? Throw that in. The shape of your system icons is available to switch and even your icon pack. And this is all within the default launcher here. Of course, you can put whatever launcher you want, but it's kind of cool to see that right out of the gate. Your home settings, I mean, tremendous number of options. The animations are sped up by default. And then of course you can turn them off completely within the settings. Now you can do some of these things on other phones through secondary launchers, but OnePlus just giving you that option straight away and almost encouraging you to take advantage of it. I'm a fan of that. I mean, the whole thing, it just, it feels really snappy. I don't need to tell you guys, 120 Hertz. And this could be a big step for them, really. If, if, if I use this thing and it's a valid competitor, or if I even see it as an improvement for me on the day-to-day -day over the S20 Ultra, it could mean that OnePlus has really arrived because that top dog, that heavy Samsung 
favorite that that I mean they've dominated that kind of icon within the flagship Android space for so long and OnePlus has been okay to occupy this secondary space which was the flagship killer now they've got this thing which they're they're basically saying is a straight up flagship certainly with the price point so I understand why that turns some people off but if it can displace this phone on the right and I think it's a valid move. I need a SIM tool. Good thing about shooting all these phone unboxing videos, there's always, a, there's often a SIM tool nearby. I slap this baby on, boom, boom. Let me do a pocket test real quick. Yeah, I mean, it feels a little bit lighter. <laughs> OnePlus 8 Pro, new personal daily driver. If you have questions about my experience with it, hit me up on Twitter. Does OnePlus have what it takes? If they want to play in the flagship space, they got to bring the A game in every single department. Can this thing beat out an S20 Ultra? Let's find out. This episode of Unbox Therapy has been brought to you by NordVPN. That's my VPN of choice. They're going to give you 30 days free for Unbox Therapy viewers. It's nordvpn.com slash Unbox Therapy. If you don't have a VPN currently, you're missing out on all kinds of regional content. I'm telling you, you plug in the VPN and all of a sudden you hit up your favorite streaming site and it looks completely different. All this fresh new content, which may for whatever reason not be licensed in your region. And trust me, you need the content right now. Now is the time to unlock extra content. The sports apps as well, it will unlock blacked out games once those sports come back online. And also, it lets me log in securely to the web when I'm traveling. It's nordvpn.com slash unbox therapy. They've got like 3,000 servers in 59 different countries. So whatever you're looking for, it's probably there. And they're gonna let you try it for free. It's a 30 day free trial, full money back guarantee. So just click the link in the description, give it a shot, Android, iOS, PC, Mac, Laptop, desktop, it works on everything, and I've been using it for a really long time. Big fan, nordvpn.com slash unbox therapy.